Radio Wemo Breakfast. Joining me now on the show is uh, Rob Swan, OBE. He's the first chap to um, walk to both polls and uh, he's more known these days for his um, ca- campaigning and crusading for the last great wilderness, which is, of course, Antarctica, and also um, outspoken about climate change issues as well. And he joins me right here in the studio this morning. Hello to you, Rob. Good to see you. Good to see you. And what actually brings... It's actually, in fact, Antarctica that brings you back down to New Zealand at the moment, it? does, it? yes. Um, I'm working on selecting a young person, kind of university age, um, we've got 10 finalists, and we're working on one of them to come with me to Antarctica in February next year, uh, working with the Pure Advantage Business Group here yep. in New Zealand. And uh, there's going to be one excited young person in, uh, I think, tomorrow. Uh, I'm making the final choice in in the next day of who comes with me uh, with a whole international team to Antarctica for a couple of weeks not from New Zealand, but from South America. That's the way we go in. And what's the purpose of the expedition? To well, the purpose really is that, you know, when it comes to New Zealand, the purpose is very simple, that um, Pure Advantage believes that this country is falling behind as far as its green, clean credentials, mm. and they want to try and inspire business and to really start to think more about clean, renewable energy, uh, the opportunities that lie for, univer- the, for this country um, on clean and green and all those issues. And they want champions. Or in my case, I'm going to find one champion for yeah. them. Because I think young people here in New Zealand, they all know there's a problem. But there is definitely a lack of leadership, whether it's from governments, whether it's from schools, whether it's from universities. There's no question there's a lack of leadership and clear direction for young people in this country on the issue. They're not stupid. Mm. They know there's a problem. They Mm. just open the newspapers or watch the weather. Mm. Um, But they don't really know what to do. Mm. So with the help of Pure Advantage, we're running this competition. One young person comes, joins with people from 30 different nations all over the world, coming to Antarctica, seeing the reality of climate change right in front of your face in Antarctica with ice caps melting, come back as a champion to engage young people and give them some direction. So when was the last time you were in in Antarctica? I go every year twice. Mm. Um, And every year I see, especially on the Antarctic Peninsula, which comes up towards South America, I mean, you can see massive areas of ice that are breaking off. Because we hear more about the Arctic, don't we? We, The Arctic being the the front line for for climate change, but not so much of what's happening down south. Well, the the Antarctic has got a lot of, you know, as as everybody says, and I'm glad we're using the word climate change, you know, people talk always about global warming. Yeah. It's not. And every time it it freezes in the winter, people go, oh, Oh, it's not global global warming. warming. (laughs) Yeah, it's not. It's climate change created by global warming. That's the issue. So in the Arctic, you've got pretty much a meltdown. And actually, very, very interesting, I was in America the other day, and they produced the new maps of the Arctic, the mm. new maps of Greenland, and that is a worry. Yeah. Any, any doubters to say it's not happening fast, you should see those satellite images. In Antarctica, there are there's some quite good climate change things happening where actually a couple of areas of Antarctica are actually getting colder. But really? the main area hmm. of the peninsula, which comes out towards South America, is definitely one of the big areas, like the North Pole, where you've got massive breakup, you've got the Larsen B ice shelf, all these issues. So I go down and I show these young people exactly what's happening, and then I try and show them that we've got to find solutions, that actually awareness is history. Hmm. If we're not aware by now, you never will be. Hmm. So we've got to look at solutions. So in Antarctica, we have our own small uh, base, which is not much bigger than your studio, but it does run only on renewable energy. Almost like Shackleton's hut or something. Yeah, it's Shackleton's hut, but running on wind and solar virtually. There's no one there. Mm. And uh, young people go on our website, 2041.com, they'll see the base there running away. So I try to take them, show them what we can do and send them back to this country uh, as a champion. Because quite frankly, New Zealand does need to wake up. 
Yeah, now let's let's get your perspective on this because the debate has raged over the past year about our marketing, our tourism marketing around the world, this 100% pure. In fact, there's a rugby ball down on the on the uh, Auckland waterfront at the moment. This is 100% pure New yeah. Zealand. Um, the debate has raged that we're not um, 100% pure. In fact, the Green Party and um, and Greenpeace say, look, look at our rivers and streams. They're in a um, in a terrible state at the moment. Well, New Zealand is a fabulous country that has sold itself and its products and its services on being pure, clean and green. And Mm. for years, you were number one. Mm. But now, in the last three or four years, you've moved from number one to number 15 on the list of those nations that are pure, clean and green. Based on what? Based on an entire survey of, I think, Sweden or one of those Scandinavian countries has now gone up. So, you know, this country slipped. Now, okay. People might say, oh, well, maybe it's not number 15, but you're sure as hell not number one anymore. Because, because the Prime Minister says, well, compared to other places, we're pretty good. Yeah, I know, but the, if you saw the Prime Minister on the Hard Talk programme where he got fried on the BBC, mm. um, you know, it is an issue. And it is an issue actually to do with the future of New Zealand. Mm. Because New Zealand has to create wealth has to create wealth to do the right things, to, to have hospitals, to have good public services, to run a fantastic World Cup. You need money. Economic you need wealth. Economic you need growth. Economic growth, correct. Mm. Mm. And what the pure advantage people who brought me here, and I, I like them, you know, they've actually thought it through very carefully, are saying is this is a business opportunity for New Zealand to actually be a centre of clean tech, renewable technologies, actually showing the world that, you know, New Zealand's a village, let's be honest. There's mm. four million people here. There's more people. I most, spend most of my time in India and China. There's more people in Bombay yeah. than there are people in Australia. So let's get it straight. New Zealand is, is a fantastic, but it's a village. And it has a chance to create wealth from clean, renewable technologies, looking to the future, becoming a test bed for it to make this country wealth, creating jobs and showing the world that you are still clean, pure and green. Because trust me, and I spoke to some farmers recently, you know, many of which were slightly sceptical, sort of saying, well, it's always been bloody cold or it's always been dry or it's always been this. Yeah. And I said, well, actually, guys and girls, it doesn't matter what you think. It's the customers now in Europe who through the big supermarket chains, through all those places, they're demanding that the standards are X, Y, and Z. And if you don't meet them, you won't sell your gear. Mm. So actually forget about whether you believe in it or not. That's the way the world is. But that's what your customers are demanding. But some of that, some of that customer demand, though, is you know could be seen as as a little bit of a fad. I think the pe- people here in New Zealand, though, want mm. to know that climate change is in fact real. So anything that we do do to go down the green tech r- um, route must be, um, you know, based on sound science. Well, I think you're right. I mean, you know, the world is definitely at a time of natural warming. It looks absolutely definite. But science hasn't yet quite confirmed it, you're right, that we, the human race, are causing climate change to happen. It's got to be It's got to be pretty definite. I've just come from the United States of America, where they won't bloody listen, excuse mm. the language, where 84 records in the last six months have been smashed. I think people need to listen to it. Uh, science will confirm it one day. Mm. And don't we all know that we must be causing a problem? Put a car in a garage, shut the door, fire up the engine, what's going to happen? Mm, mm. We've just got to think that way. And I think it's got to be to do with insurance in our minds, that all of us know there's a problem. All of us insure our homes, we insure our cars, we insure our lives, we insure our bicycles. Why do we do that? It doesn't mean they're all going to be stolen tomorrow or set on fire tomorrow. Mm. This is about an insurance for the future. So on one side of the debate, you've got people saying the world's going to end tomorrow. They're wrong. You've got other people saying we're doing absolutely nothing at all to our planet. They're wrong. Mm. In the middle is the truth. Mm. And the truth is we must do the right thing now. Okay, that sounds good, but it only will be sustainable if we're doing the right thing, if it's actually creating jobs, creating wealth and the rest of it. And by some complete miracle, when you and I are dead and buried, somebody says, well, oh, well, actually, you know, 
we weren't causing it as much as we thought we were. Well, great. Yeah. What's going to be wrong? Fossil mm. fuels will run out. Petrol will become more expensive. So, you know, in the middle is the truth, and we must do the right thing to do that. It needs to be businesslike. It needs to be inspiring. And, you know, science may take a little bit of time to confirm it, but don't you know in your heart that we're actually causing these changes? It's got to be. But uh, it, it's really going to require, though, a complete step change, isn't it? A, a, an absolute sort of revolution of how we live our lives um, and how we conduct business and what we earn money from. In fact, it's hard to even imagine what that world is going to look like. Well, in, in a way, not, because, you know, China, I, I focus on India and China. I'm very, very interested in how New Zealand's dealing with this, because the debate is small, there's not that many people. I come to New Zealand just to check out to see how you're managing it, because I have hope yeah. that, lead, that New Zealand could lead the world, be the first carbon-neutral nation. Imagine that. Mm. It could happen. I take that information. I go into the, the nightmare of India, 1.3 billion people. I go into China, 1.3 billion people. And if they make the same mistakes, those two great nations, as we've made here in New Zealand or back in my country, make the same mistakes getting what we've got, we're screwed. So we need to actually focus on those nations. Now, what I find very hopeful is a country like China is very, very fast going round the backs of the world mm. and actually doing it. Top 10 richest people in China today, five of them are in renewable energies. Mm. Not because they want to save the planet, but they know it's good business. Because often we see all the dirty stuff that happens yeah. in China, but what you're saying is that we're actually at the same time leading the world yeah. in this stuff. First car ever to come from China to the United States of America arrived last week, an all-electric car. Wow. First car from China. Mm. China is going to go round the side. Why? It's just like when, come on, go back to my country. Industrial Revolution, 1850s. The rivers were full of crap. The air was killing people. And one of the reasons the Chinese are getting their act together is because their workforce is suffering. Yeah. And that was the reason why Britain, in its Industrial Revolution, first started to clean things up. Not because they wanted to save the planet. No, because the workers who created the money were getting sick. Mm. That's happening in China right now at the same time. And what I li like about Pure Advantage is that it is business-driven. And, you know, you might get environmentalists saying, well, you know, this, 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 and this. But actually, business is powerful. Business can make changes. Do you, but do you, do you have any insights, though, on what businesses here could be doing? Because you talk about this electric car in China. We're not going to be making electric cars here in New Zealand because we don't currently make, make normal cars, do we? So um, what, you know, what, 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 what could we actually see businesses producing and making in New Zealand that could earn us money but also create this green economy? I think in the, in the, in the entire thing, you know, it, it, it runs across the board. Mm. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't. There are probably there are lots of companies out there in clean tech already, with solar and wind. Uh, there are lots of farming practices that, you know, perhaps haven't gone as well as they might have done. That's why maybe you slip from number one down down the list on pure clean and green. But what's going I to think employ a lot of people? Hmm? What's going to employ a lot of people? Well, I think what will it's also retaining employment. It's an important fact. So mm. if you lose market share, what happens to the farms? They're not selling their products, less employment. So it's not just creating new jobs, it's protect protecting existing jobs. Also, you think how many jobs... You know, OK, I arrived in New Zealand two days ago. Fantastic. Come into the airport. You're going through heaven. I don't know who did that, but it was so well done. Mm. Coming into this country, it blows your head off. There's like beautiful posters about everything cool about New Zealand. Beaches, lovely girls, people on bicycles, beautiful trees, sheep, you know, all this stuff. And I'm going, wow. That's why people come here. Yeah. So think how many jobs tourism and eco-tourism and pure clean and green attract. So it's not just like how many technology new companies can be built to provide jobs. It's also protecting the jobs that already exist in tourism and protecting the jobs that already exist in farming. Because if you lose market share, and that could be a tourism market share, mm. it could be 
a, a dairy or a meat or a lamb market share. So it's not just new tech. It's also protecting jobs because if you lose that one thing as you come into that airport, because it's true, that's not a lie, mm. coming into the airport and seeing all these wonderful things about New Zealand. It's not a lie. That's what this country is about. You just need to protect it better. And if you don't protect it, people won't be so interested to come and see you and you will lose market share of existing things that you're already selling mm. and, and getting around the world. So you just need to protect it. Well, let's, um, let's look to um, next year when you head back down to um, Antarctica and you take the, um, the winner of the Pure Advantage competition. What are you expecting to see down there next time? Well, first I'm expecting that the young person who comes from Pure Advantage will be an excellent person. They will be. So off we go down there. Young people from all over the world, business women and business men from all over the world. So the first thing that that young person is going to come across is a whole bunch of completely switched on Chinese students, red hot, unbelievable young people. A whole group of amazing young people from India, switched on, know more about the environment than I do, young people from all over, all, from all over the world. So the first thing that person will see isn't just Antarctica, it's like, wow. There are people out there that are on this and really working hard on it mm -hmm. and really cool people. What we, what we do is we head south across the worst seas in the world, the mighty Drake Passage south of Cape Horn. And this is on a, a special on a boat? big ship. A, a big, big ship. ship. Okay. Uh, and every single person, for any cynics listening, um, every single person has to offset the fact that it does cost about 10 tonnes of carbon huh. for the entire trip. So, right. you know, we're fully aware that what we do with the ship and the aircraft to get us down there needs to be offset. It's an important issue. We arrive in Antarctica and we go straight to where the ice caps used to be. And they've gone. So I show these young people satellite images with a dot on it saying, mm. where do you think we are now? Mm. And they go, well, I don't know. Where are we? So we'll see that red dot, but the red dot's in the middle of an ice shelf. Hmm. That, that's where we are, right. and the map's three years old. Right. That's the sort of thing, that's the sort of impact, but not in a negative way, because the most important thing with all of this is that you know, people aren't inspired by negative. No one ever has, no one ever will be. And I do find, on the whole, present company accepted, I might say, that... Uh, this country seems to have an addiction at the moment to negative news, mm, mm, a bit. Mm. And I think that it's really important for young people that there's some positive news. So, yeah, we go and see where these things are going wrong, but then we go and see our little education station in Antarctica that runs only on renewable energy, and if we can get it to run on wind and solar in Antarctica, we could do a hell of a lot better here in New Zealand or the rest of the world. So it's seeing something to shock you, but then actually looking at solutions and inspiration and hope and leadership. You know, le leadership is not something that sort of begins just when you're wearing a suit and you're 50. Yeah. It begins actually when you're 18, 17. You know, it begins as you are planning your life when you're at university. That's so you'd expect those young people to go back to... Um, Come back here. And, and make an impact. And make an impact, go around universities, because... I tell you, it's like you go into a university here and it's like going in to a bunch of people that have been in the desert for a long time with no water. They're so hungry, they're so keen to get positive information and some direction uh, on the environment. Because they're connected, because they're on Facebook, they're on the internet, they know that these issues are for real, and they're not hiding from them. They just no, don't have a direction. That's the problem. In some ways, are we waiting for the old guard, the current leaders, the current politicians to move on? Um, I'm not saying die or anything like that, but just to move on, retire or whatever, um, and, and for the young people who are switched on and do actually know that this stuff is going on out there and that um, climate change is, is real and it's happening and it's having a, a big impact, are we waiting for them to fall into the leadership? Well, in a way, but I think what's really important is it goes back to this, you can't do anything good, really, as a nation unless you create wealth. You, you have to create wealth. So, you know, if, you're, if one's saying, well, you know, 
when these older people have gone and the new people come in and they're all green and that that's not the solution it's got to be green linked to business mm. that's the key you know a greenie couldn't run this country mm. just by simply saying we can't do this we can't do that we can't do this we can't do that what you've got to do is you've got to have people that believe it and it's part of managing the nation in a business-like manner to create wealth to create jobs and then with that money you can do the right thing because if the greening and the business weren't linked then what the, the next generation would make the same mistakes as the previous? well they go the other way yeah and they would say, well, we, we can't do all this stuff, and they end up with no money. Mm. At the moment, it seems to be people are completely dominated by money, 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 and they've gone too far that way. So somewhere in the middle, again, is the truth, mm. that it's actually business. You know, and people have power. I say this to young people. You have power. If you've got $10, you have every right to spend that $10 how you wish to spend it on products and services that are showing to you that they're actually trying to do the right thing. And, of course, there's some greenwash out there and there's lots of sort of blah, blah, blah. But use the power you've got. Ask for, you know, your electricity provider to provide green energy and mm. all those things. It, it, it does require action. We can't just sit and wait for it to all happen. And that's why, you know, I think Pure Advantage has got some seriously cool business men and women from this country got them together and said right let's form this thing and get out there and it's you know it's all to do with green economy and green growth it's not to do with sort of going mm. to hug a tree we can do that at the weekend yeah, certainly <laughs> well a whole lot more information about this is up at um, pureadvantage.org forward slash antarctica and of course the um the 2041.com website as well which is um rob swan's home there Rob, really um, great having you in and an absolute pleasure to, to meet you. Well, good luck, good luck with all that you're doing and the climate programme. Uh, you know, we'll just keep bashing on. Yeah. We'll get through in the end. That's all we can do, I suppose. You got it. <laughs> Rob Swan, my guest.